All right, what's up, everybody? It is Thursday, August 25th. I've been, I've been at jury duty the whole day. I thought I'd get dismissed. They had us first at um, civil court, and then about midday, they said, oh, we don't need you here. And I got all excited. They're just going to send us home. And they said, but we need you at criminal court. So they brought us over to criminal court and then we sat around and uh, listened to the judge speak and we didn't even get to jury selection. So I got to go back there again tomorrow. Anyway, it's a pain in the neck. But um, so we had a good day today. There's a couple of things. Actually, there's a lot I want to talk about. First of all, uh, the market to me is doing exactly what I expected it to do. You may recall, you know, that day we were down 600. What was that on Monday, right? And I said, you know, I was a little bit, I was a little bit baffled by that because the market is really short. I gave you some numbers. I said the um, large speculative funds are net short 600,000 contracts of S&P E-mini futures. Um, that's the equivalent of face value of a hundred and twenty six billion dollar commitment short I mean that's that's big for a spec a speculative cohort and even the small speculators they are net short not not to that degree but they're net short dealers are net long a record amount by the way that's six hundred thousand net short of the large specs that is a record too, net short and the dealer net long position, and that reflects their offset. You know, dealers are going to be on the opposite side to their customers, so they're using that to hedge. So I just look at that like as a contrary indicator. If they're really, really net long, which they are, you know, that's like saying the market is so bearish, like sentiment is so bearish. So, and I gave you the um, anecdote, my story, you know, my days down on the floor as a floor trader, you know, I was a member of four different exchanges and then when the pit got short, you know, we were all selling, trying to push it down. I mean, it just, you know, and we were able to do it a little bit, you know, we were able to, you know, but then it just, once it stopped, once we all together stopped selling, I mean, it just popped right back up because we all had to buy it back. And so yesterday, and I told you this on Tuesday, I said Wednesday we're going to get a Social Security payment. I said that we should have an up day. And sometimes that flows even into the second day, or sometimes you see the reaction on the second day, which is today. I mean, here's the thing, folks. So let me finish what I was going to say. So this, to me, it looks again like it, it's getting very easy to read what's going on. And by that, I mean everybody's freaking out about um, Fed monetary policy and, and QT, which hasn't even really started yet, but they're all freaking out about that. You know, this is the monetarist mania. This is, this is the mental illness called monetarism. You know, I, I've said that so many times. Monetarism is a mental illness, and it, it affects everybody. Everybody is... is um, you know, infected with this, not me and hopefully not you who follow me, uh, but everybody else is uh, infected by this, including the policymakers themselves. I mean, you, you literally have the Fed uh, every day looking at, hey, where's the, where's the Fed fund futures trading? Should we go 75 today? Then the next day, oh, we'll go 50. Oh, we'll go 75. We'll go, it's nonsense. It's ridiculousness. So the market is trading to me like it's short, you know, um, we still have one more day tomorrow. Uh, Powell speaks at beautiful uh, Jackson Hole, you know, and he might he might freak out the monitors again. But what I'm saying is it has become very easy to read. All right. And here's the thing I want you to understand. Every time they hear a comment which leans hawkish, they're going to freak out and sell. And every time they see a strong economic number, they're going to freak out and sell, okay? And then what happens is once, you know, they stop their selling, like uh, the pit is short, all right? The trading pit is short. 
it's going to start coming back up again for this one simple reason. The swimming pool is filling up. The fiscal flows, listen, right now, the latest data, August 24th, yesterday, the deficit for August is now at 218, almost 219 billion. I said we're going to hit like 225. We may even go over 225 billion. We still have like a week left in the month uh, in terms of the data. That's a big addition to the balances of the economy, the financial balances of the economy. In fact, we haven't seen an addition like that since November of last year, November 2021. So these people are selling, and here, I'm going to put something up here now, because there's a guy, and maybe you've been uh, uh, reading some of these guys, some of this guy's uh, quotes and, and comments. His name is Mike Wilson, and he is, I think he's the chief market strategist for Morgan Stanley, and Mike Wilson was, he was correct and bearish at the beginning of the year, uh, but uh, the reason, and, and you know, this is my uh, explanation. He was bearish based on, you know, the classic monetarist understanding, if you want to call it that, or the classic monetarist belief that, oh, the Fed is raising interest rates and they're going to Q do QT. So it's going to, the market's going to go down. But what helped him in that call, because he doubled down on that bearish call in, in April when we started popping back up. But what helped him was we had that enormous tax drain in April, followed by a very meager positive fiscal flow in May, followed by another big uh, tax drain in June. So we had like a boom, boom, the one-two punch, the market, boom, boom. It was getting off the canvas and then boom, it got hit again. So Mike, Mike Wilson's timing what was pure luck. I mean, he didn't mention anything about that. To him, it's all about um, <laughs> Fed monetary policy and QT. But here's something he said today. A friend of mine sent me this um, tweet because apparently I think somebody said, hey, we, we can maybe go to new highs. And, you know, yours truly, I, I mean, as long as the fiscal stays the way it is, we are going to go to new highs sooner rather than later. Okay? But let me just read what he, what he wrote. I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. He said, to be making some grandiose call about, how, about new highs is, quite frankly, it's irresponsible given what's going on with the Fed and QT coming. It's going to be a lot worse than people have experienced so far. Now let me, let me help you with this a little bit. Let me, let me bring your focus in on this a little bit. So here's this guy. And he must make a lot of money. He's the chief investment strategist of Morgan Stanley, you know, the house of Morgan. And um, he doesn't understand, fun first of all, monetary policy. Let's talk about that. He cites monetary policy, which, you know, he's talking about interest rates. Fine. Interest rates, um, we understand. Fed raises interest rates. It, it's a price increase. But he doesn't get the fact that rate hikes also equate to an expansion in fiscal flows through the interest channel. By the way, I should mention that second quarter, we had second quarter revision of GDP came out today. Um, personal interest income in the second quarter increased by $25 billion. That is the biggest increase since the first um, quarter of 2017. And back then, what, what was going on? Fed was raising interest rates, right? They started raising interest rates at the end of 2015 in December, and they did it through all of 2016, and by 2017, that really started to flow through. So we got a 25 billion. Mike Wilson doesn't talk about that. In his brain and in everybody else's monitor's brain, it's, oh my God, interest rates. And that's bad. But they never look at the other side of the reality, which 25 billion, look, um, wages and salaries went up a lot. They went up by over 200 billion. But 25 billion, that's like, you know, that's like more than 10%, 12.5% of wages and salaries. That was, you know, equivalent to the increase in 
interest income, and it's just getting going. That's number one. Number two, in that quote, he cites QT, quantitative tightening, which hasn't even really begun yet. I mean, it was, you know, I just looked at the numbers again this week. If, uh, actually, a Fed balance sheet went up by a little bit. But anyway, QT, there, there we have it again. A lack of understanding. Two things. Number one, that QT is simply an asset swap. It's taking out reserves and replacing that with treasuries, which are, you know, those are dollar equivalents. Those are cash equivalents. So there's no net change in the financial balances of the economy. It stays the same. Just the composition changes. That's number one. Number two, um, <laughs> the Fed, and I've said this so many times, he doesn't understand the, the regulatory realities that banks have to adhere to. Like the Fed had to create a whole separate entity, vehicle, that reverse repo facility because the Fed's QE was pumping in so much reserves into the banking system that the banks were coming uh, against the threshold of being in non-compliance with leverage ratios. So the Fed had a, hey, well, let's, let's make a separate facility where you could stick those deposits over there. You could stick those reserves over there in order to keep you in compliance. So QT is actually a good, it's a necessary thing. Once they reduce reserve balances, guess what's going to happen? The banks will have all this space on their balance sheets to make more loans. Doesn't understand that. It's a big guy. It's a the guy's the head of uh, strategy at Morgan Stanley. I just... I just finished reading a book on um, the House of Morgan, the whole history, uh, you know, and, and how Morgan Stanley became like starting from, you know, uh, Pierpont Morgan and J.P. Morgan and, you know, Morgan Stanley. That's like that. That was like the crown jewel of the of the Morgan Empire anyway. And he's over there and he, does, he doesn't understand it. But this goes back to what I was telling you guys at the beginning of the year that I can't wait for this stuff to happen because it's going to expose a lot of these people, not just expose, but the markets, you know, the, the, the evolution of the markets will be exactly opposite, 180 degrees opposite of what these guys are, you know, screaming about. All right. So, yeah. It was a good day. Tomorrow I got to go back to this freaking jury duty. But hey, it's a civic duty. We all have to do it every once in a while. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Hopefully see you tomorrow. Bye.